Welcome to today's episode of the Working Wisdom Podcast Series, brought to you by the C.T. Bauer College of Business at the University of Houston. We're having a conversation about work-life balance, how to navigate and overcome challenges within your career, and how to make business more accommodating to a diverse workforce. My guest for today is someone who comes to mind when I think of the word resilience. She's someone I have utmost respect for. She certainly has a unique and non-linear story. She came to Houston from San Francisco to marry Clifton or C.C. Williams, who worked for NASA as an astronaut. Yes, an astronaut. An astronaut's wife is who she is. Just three years after their move, and while she was pregnant with their second child, her husband died in a plane crash. He would have been the fourth man on the moon had he lived. While her two daughters were young, she stayed in Clear Lake and worked in real estate. She is Beth Williams. Beth Williams. In 1993, and with a friend by the name of Natalie Karakoko, an interpreter for the NASA Apollo Soyuz test program, the two women co founded Tech Trans International, a company that was going to provide Russian translation and language instruction to NASA for the US Russian space program. Two months after starting the company, Beth's partner, Natalie, was killed by a drunk driver. It doesn't get any more non-linear. This company, Tektrans International, has grown from five employees to more than 200, with offices, of course, in Houston, but also in Russia, in Jordan, in Azerbaijan, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Colombia. Beth was named Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year in 2011 and was part of the Houston Business Journal's Women Who Mean Business, yes, Women Who Mean Business, list as for-profit businesswoman of the year in 2016. She is someone I have tremendous respect for. So with that, my first question to you, Beth, is how do you do it? How did you do it? Was there something in your upbringing that helped you develop this resilience muscle? I think it was a drive. Growing up, I was allowed to be free, to explore. To We lived out in the country on the river, and we were, we were just allowed to run free. And I think having that was a good way to start. But I remember when I was very little, probably four, my mother would come, I was digging on the beach in the sand all the time, and she finally said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm going to China. I don't know where it came from, but early in my life, I had this thing about, I must go. (laughs) And it seemed like I was preparing all that time to leave that nice little town of New Bern to get out into the world. Siblings? How many siblings did you have? Were they like oh, you? Oh, I had five, uh, three brothers and two sisters. Okay. Yes. And were they similar in terms of they all wanted to go? No. Okay. They've taken different paths. Okay. And you were a professional water skier and aqua maid at Cypress Gardens Theme Park in Florida. Yes. What was that like? That was wonderful. You know, I, I had left college to go there. And uh, it, was a, it was the first time I'd ever left home, first time I'd been anywhere, and I wound up in this magical garden. And I had been water skiing all my life, so I qualified for their program. So we would, we would ski in shows every day, four shows a day. And uh, we did a lot of modeling for Janssen bathing suits and boats and motors and everything. Anyway, it was a lovely, charming thing, but after two years, it got terribly boring. And I needed a change. So I packed up my car, and one, another young lady went with me, and we drove out to San Francisco. 
Did you know what you were going to do? In I school? had no clue. <laughs> but it was exciting. <laughs> and uh, I got a job in a bank, and we got an apartment, and we just moved on from there. And she left after about three months, and I met another lady and moved in with her. And I stayed out there for about six years. C.C., how and when did you all meet? I met him when I was in college, and he was right out of flight school, so back in New Bern. <clears throat> I think we were engaged four times. I just wasn't quite ready. I just needed to see what was out there and really find out who I was. And uh, finally, when he was applying for the astronaut program, he said we had to get married because they'd never had a bachelor. And I told him I wasn't going to take that on my responsibility. Go do it and we'll talk. So he made it. <laughs> and I came here to marry him. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, listening to you, it seems like if I think about how we're raising kids today or how even us, how, how do we live life? We don't leave the home without a cell phone, our GPS, no. our calendars. Um, we worry about kids going too far from the home, wear your helmet and I'm all for it, you know, seat belts. Are we too risk averse? I think we're dumbing down the country, quite frankly. You know, companies have to now have security officers and safety officers. And I have chairs in my office and I wonder where, what's the problem with the safety? Our security officer understand because we have government contracts and she's just brilliant. But some of this stuff, <laughs> if a chair is uncomfortable, tell me I'll fix it. I just think we're kind of dumbing down the country. My biggest gripe, I own three buildings and I got inspected by um, one of the government agencies and I have gone out of my way to make things perfect for handicap and everybody. And I passed the handicap, right, and then he looked at my water fountain and he said, it won't pass. And I said, it's low, it's at a level for a wheelchair. And he said, not if someone has a sore back. You have to put in another water fountain. And I said, if they got a sore back, tell them bring a bottle of water, stay home, go to a chiropractor. <laughs> Why does that affect my water fountain? So it would be, be a couple hundred thousand dollars to retrofit these buildings. So I said, I have the solution, and I turned it off. And he said, that'll do. <laughs> that is, that is so, so... I think we're kind of overcompensating for people. Right. And do you see that, you know, you have offices uh, literally all over the world, and do you see us at a disadvantage when you, when you travel abroad and you see what's happening in those countries? No, I, you know, I really, well, what, I can't even go there, but, but I don't in these offices. We hire local, mm -hmm. and we use the same procedures we use here. And we give people, it's your baby, do it. Call us if there's a problem. And people, people seem to want responsibility. They want to feel like they belong and that it's theirs. And so it's same thing works in our office. You give people a task and that's theirs. And don't micromanage. And that's, I think that's been our success. Ownership. Yeah. I mean, we call and we praise them and we send them, you know, everything that goes good, we acknowledge it. And it really works well that way. So you're, you've been married and you have you're on the way to having the second child, and you lose your husband. But you picked up, and I you did. actually started a company. Talk us through that whole experience. I did. It was, I figured if I could get through that, I could get through anything. But the main thing was I was pregnant, and I didn't want to fall apart because I didn't want to take a chance to lose her. And uh, so I just kind of held it together. And once she was born, it became a happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, a whole, I, it was also, I succeeded at something <laughs> really nice, you know? And uh, I just kind of went on from there, but I was determined that they would know him. And it was kind of difficult here because we didn't have family, but his family was from Mobile, so we became extremely involved with his mother. And so the girls have a real keen sense of who he was. They've been to his hometown a lot. You know, they know people, and I think it's been a good thing for them to have that tie with him. So friends and family support? Yes. Okay. 
And what made you decide when you and Natalie worked together? What what was it that prompted you to think about starting your own company? Because that was pretty unusual, right? It is. But I'm kind of a gambler. <laughs> and I looked at the thing and I thought, I don't see how we can lose with her because she's the one with all the knowledge. And my job was going to be put it together, borrow the money, get things rolling. And I knew how to do those parts. And so... It, was, it seemed pretty easy. So we wrote the unsolicited proposal, and they put it out for bid, and we got people to help us, and we won. We won because we had her. It wasn't, I was the unknown factor, you know. And uh, she, she brought so much to the table. And the day she was killed, we were just, the whole, all five of us were just devastated. And the employees at that time had worked with her and knew her well and didn't. I was the unknown to them also. And they said, we believe in you, we'll stick with you. And they're still there. What was it that made them say that? I have no idea. <laughs> I really, I, I think they had watched me and they, they knew how much I cared. And I think I had already sort of seen that how much I cared. And I think that was probably it. I hope that was it. Yeah. Something did because they stayed. Right. And it's now grown to... 200 employees. Yeah. yeah, that is that is so amazing. Um, again, I go back to how, how do you pick up the threads when something that extreme happens? You lose someone that you're so depending on, uh, depending on, dependent on. Emotionally, it was your husband and yeah. at a time when you were expecting a child. And then your business partner, who was really an inspiration to the founding of this company, um, when these things happen, most people give up. And I go back to, and I know I'm sort of repeating myself, but what is it you do? Is there something you do on a daily basis to really say, I'm going to deal with this? Is it just, you know, uh, just the way you were raised? Uh, or is it uh, having friends, family? What is the, the formula, if you will? You know, in the morning when you wake up, I get up at 6 so I can see the sunrise with the cats. We dance around the balcony just to morning, and I just am determined I'm going to start my day good. And I try and keep that focus. But basically, I'm just, I'm a fighter. I will not give up. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like losing him. Don't get me wrong, it's very rough, but I knew in my heart I was going to make it through. Mm -hmm. I knew there was no chance I wouldn't. I had responsibility. And with Natalie, it was kind of the same thing. I didn't have children there. But I had people, and I had responsibility. And that's one thing that really keeps me going, mm -hmm. is, that, is that awareness. Have you ever thought that life is not fair? No. Because I think people, some, there's a lot of people who have had a lot worse than I have. And a lot of people didn't have the abilities. And I don't think it's, you know, I think a lot of success depends on if you're willing to ride it out the hard times and, and the good times, and kind of level them out. You know, that is, that is amazing. That's just what we need to hear. It really is. Um, in, um, in 2013, it's, uh, you were featured in a book called The Astronaut Wives Club. What was it like to be an astronaut's wife? Um, and sort of following up on that, will we ever move to a world where there's a book that's called the Astronaut Husbands Club? Yes, because we have them now. And uh, I think that'll probably happen. And, they're, you know, it, it's a whole change dynamic. When I married him, women stayed at home, women raised the children, because the husbands were gone all the time, training. And uh, it was a quieter, it was the last of the quiet, simple times. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the last of the time where you were hoes <laughs> and the little shift dresses and gloves, you know. I mean, it was really, it was the simple time. And uh, I didn't fit in quite well because I'm very independent and I came here from San Francisco. And I, was, I think I was a little bit of a curiosity. But they welcomed me with open arms. And um, we didn't live in the area where everybody else lived. We moved down further on a bio where we could ski and have boat. So I was involved, but it was always at a little bit of a distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
cats. You talked about cats. Have you always had cats? I'm, again, I'm trying no, to call out what is it that, you know, makes you who you are? I have not always had cats, but I tell you, they're great company. And the best part is they're kind of like me. They're independent. I raise orchids. They're the same way. Just leave them alone and let them bloom. And the cats and I all operate on that same wavelength. That is funny. Um, you know, at Bauer, we say, right, you know, recruit the right people and uh, stay out of their way because they'll do magic. They'll create magic for you. Um, we're going to take a short break and come back with a message from our sponsors. Bauer College's executive education program is training business professionals and leaders to tackle the challenges of tomorrow. Courses in consulting, strategy, analytics, project management, and more, led by Bauer's award-winning faculty. Find open enrollment programs at bauer.uh.edu slash exec. And we're back, and I am with Beth Williams, wife of an astronaut, founder of Tech Trans International, fighter, successful businesswoman, and cancer survivor. <clears throat> Five times. <laughs> I, I am the poster child at MD Anderson. No, it's been, it's just another one of those things that hit you. It started when the girls were very little and it was thyroid cancer. And I didn't know what all that meant. It was a little scary. And I, my mother-in-law came and I got through the surgery. I got through all the treatments and I just moved on and forgot about it. And they were growing up, and we're doing great, and life is good. And it hit again, and uh, this time it was colon. And then that was twice. And we got zipped through that, and then breast. Mm -hmm. So I ha I, I'm all the colors of the rainbow on those bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we got, they, they were grown by then. They came in for that. And, uh, and then the last one was kidney. But I tell you, I am a true believer in MD Anderson, and I'm sitting here. And it, it, it's not been a bad experience. It's been, you know, it's been painful at times, but you just get over it. You make it sound easy and simple, but I know it cannot have been. You have choices in life. You can be miserable or you can be happy. You can hurt or you can choose to ignore it. I choose to ignore all that stuff. I, I just figure, I go to MD Anderson, let them do their thing. Don't bother me. I've got other job. So it's, it's almost like the, the job and the focus on something else keeps you grounded. Yes. And so you almost like you want a problem in another dimension to sort of level it off. Exactly. Nice, nice. And you know, the remarkable thing, just listening to you, Beth, is that all the stuff, the research on leadership and success... It's the Beth Williams uh, g uh, hormone, as I call it, or gene or whatever, because it's really about not, not it is education and, you know, or yeah. what you're raised with, but it's really that resilience to not give up. And, um, it's your heart. It's, yeah, it's... yeah. But when you are um, down about something, something's happened, is there something you do, listen to music? Pray, uh, meditate, uh, eat uh, uh, Oreo cookies. I don't know. Is there yeah, something? Yeah, Oreo cookies. I mostly I talk to myself. When I have a bad day, I come home. I don't turn on any lights. I don't turn on any sound. Mm -hmm. I keep the house quiet. The cats and I walk out on the deck, and hopefully the moon's there. You know, and I just I don't answer the phone. I turn it off. I just relax. And then the next day, I'm ready to go again. Wow. Because I'll, usually in that kind of a f area, I can resolve whatever problem it was, or at least make a plan. You need that emptiness to I do. create uh, capacity. I do. Right? I do. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Switching gears a little bit, you've been a speaker, a mentor to our students at the Wolf Center, and I am. I just feel like those students are so extremely lucky, so extremely lucky. How do you see your role as a mentor, and did you have mentors? I think life was my mentor. You know, I think all the little things pulled together. But this, I, I consider it an honor to be involved with them. I just think those kids are amazing, and I know they're the future, 
and I truly believe in them, and anything I can do for them, I would do. Nice. You are also a donor to the Wolf Center, and in 2010, you established the Tech Trans International Scholarship Endowment. You and the folks, your colleagues that you work with, give to the fund, and we're so grateful for that. That fund has since doubled in value, and again, I cannot say how grateful I am because that goes to student scholarships. And in 2015, you renamed that endowment to be called the Dave Cook Scholarship Endowment in recognition of the program's director of mentorship. Dave, as we all know him, is truly a blessing to anyone whose life he touches, who comes in contact with him. Talk uh, to us about what prompted you to make this change. We've guaranteed our scholarship to a million dollars, and um, it will get there within the next probably five years or so. And I did it because I wanted that. Dave had the vision that every young person that went there got a scholarship. And so I did it because I thought what it would do is encourage kids as they grow out and they become successful to donate back to that scholarship because Dave's somebody you can't forget. So I think I've watched him with them and I realized that they all honor and respect him and love him dearly. And I thought by putting it in his name, it would raise more money for the school and keep a fund going. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's, that's such a powerful story. And I think about your company. It's not called the Beth Williams Translation International. It's Tech Trans. The scholarship that you've named after is after Dave Cook. Yeah. So there's a, there is a component to it's not about you. It's about the issue and you're wanting to give back. That's, yes. Uh, have you always been that way? Yes, I think so. I don't, I don't look upon myself as successful. I look upon the company as the su- success. And so the company's made up of Martha's and all the people that work there and around the world that work for us. And that's the success. I'm always amazed. You know, when when I get an award and I think, (laughs) I'm just always amazed that I got that far. You know, I'm still back here. And and you know, what, what was amazing to me was to learn that most, if not all, your employees have been with the company since it was founded. Um, our, our average turnover is 11 years. Wow. wow. I think the national is four, three. Is there anything you all do to maintain that culture? Number one, we take an interest in people. And truly, if you're not somebody that wants to work, you probably don't want to be there. Because we give you work and we give you responsibility. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we were voted top companies to work for in six years in a row. And uh, it's been a, I, I don't know what keeps them, but I know that I'm, I'm one of those people that drives them crazy. I'm walking around all the time. You know, I'm chatting. I'm, <laughs> you got a minute? How's it going at home? What's, you know, I do all the things HR tells you shouldn't do, <laughs> but I'm interested and I genuinely care. And I think that makes a difference. I love that. I love that breaking the rules uh, <laughs> characteristic. And you've really sort of uh, validated everything we try to do here. So anytime, you know, in the future, someone says, why are you doing that? Oh, Beth Williams told me to do that. That's so, right. Just yes, tell them. I will. I will. <laughs> if you had one message to share with our students, what would that be? Just believe in yourself. Trust others and move on. Nice. And going back to the earlier question about, you know, we live in an interesting world. Um, Just things happening, just very different from probably the way in which many of us were raised, uh, if that's the right word. Um, If you were queen of the universe, what would you do to change the world? Abolish egos. (laughs) I love that. I love that. (laughs) Could not agree more on that. Beth Williams, entrepreneur, wife, mother, mentor, donor, leader, and friend. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Working Wisdom podcast series from the C.T. Bauer College of Business. 
brought to you by the Working Families Initiative. The initiative aims to provide support and access for women in business school and the workforce and to generate research that organizations can use to implement policies and standards to benefit a diverse workforce. For more information about Bauer College and this podcast series, visit www.bauer.uh.edu slash podcasts.